morning, Kevin here, and Cynthia and I are in West Lavington, and we are at the parish church of St Mary Magdalene of West Lavington. And the reason for us being here today is we're looking for the birthplace and the burial place of Richard Cobden. The, he was famous for the repeal of the Corn Law. Well, we've just come up this pathway, and just to the side of the the church is this little meadow but this is the sort of entrance into the main part of the church and we've got a few gravestones down there but let me just tell you a little bit about the history of the church though West Lavington is today in effect an extension of Midhurst it was formerly an outlying part of the parish of East Lavington which contained the seat of the Wilberforce family uh, from around about 1900, the 1900s. The best known of whom was the Bishop Samuel Wilberforce, known as Soapy Sam, who had presented his brother-in-law, Henry Manning, to the rectory. The site is said to have been a rabbit warren, though the date of this and the, any related structures are unknown. The area was terraced for its new purpose and among the, among the graves, Near the southeast corner of the chancel is a simple stone with the surround to Richard Cobden, died 1865. The great free trader, though he lived in his birthplace of Hayshot nearby, possibly he chose this and his burial, place of burial, and his son had been interned here in 1856. His associate John Bright and Gladstone were among those who attended the funeral. So we're just wandering. Cynthia's away taking photographs at the moment. So I'm just coming around us. I think this must be the east end. We've got all these different headstones around here and there's some lovely trees on this path leading around to the church. Some rather magnificent tombs. And there's all these gravestones back down here. And as we come around here, this one here, I don't know what this one is. And this one actually is Richard Cobden. I was looking for something very small, very plain, very simple, but in fact, it's this, this tomb here. And inscribed on the end, also to Richard, son of Richard and Catherine Ann Cobden, born 12th of March, 1841, died the 6th of April, 1856. Such a shame that it's been let go a little bit. On the side, also to Catherine Ann, wife of Richard Cobden. And there's some other writing down at the bottom, I can't really see what it says. Born the 25th of October, oh no, December, sorry, 1815, died the 16th of April, 18. 1850 something, I can't read that, some of the, the gold leafing is gone. But here we've got this lovely heather all through here, beautiful colours. And we have a copper beech tree, two copper beech trees. Now this must lead up to the main entrance on the south side. So let's just see where this takes me. Lovely benches all around this churchyard for people to come and sit in. And there's some steps going away down over there. And here we have the entrance porch to the church. Built of stone and oak, leaded light windows and uh, cladding on the side very tall porch and it's underneath this huge yew tree with this box hedging around the side to the left and the path I think I'm assuming just carries on round which it does to the north side big stone buttresses on here but it'd be interesting to see if we can actually get inside Unfortunately, the church we can't get into. 
although the other strange thing is when we walked along this path just now we could clearly hear somebody inside the church probably in the bell tower tapping away with a hammer but as soon as we started talking about it the tapping stopped but I'm standing alongside the porch at the moment and you can see that you've got the, the windows here we can't get in to see what they're like but the bell tower itself is construction of wood shingles. It's got a, um, a weather vane at the top, which looks like a cockerel from the side, which it is. And as I mentioned about the yew tree, but there's a, 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 a large variety of different, different trees here. There's an ash tree alongside of it. Cynthia's down there, she's been taking photographs of everything here. Then inside the porch itself, you've got you've got pews or benches either side, uh, which are stone. The door is huge, or a pair of doors actually, with all these fantastic ironworks on here, which is brilliant. Again, Mark English, if you watch this, a big door for you. Not painted, which I'm glad to see. And then the timbers have been painted blue which I don't like, um, they should have just left that natural colour. But this is the view from inside the porch looking out. So let me just have a little bit of a wander down these steps onto this lower level. Very, very old handrails here going down either side, which is lovely to see because quite often they'll be replaced Cynthia's hiding again. And then we've got another layer here, another level, with some um, graves just along this lower level. You can see where it's all been terraced up. But that's the view, lovely view, back towards the east end of the church, with all the heather and the, and the different plants and trees that are there. But it's a church that I didn't even know, know existed until a couple of days ago, really, when we started talking about trying to find the burial place and the birthplace of Richard Cobden. So I'm just going to walk back up here now. And then we'll be heading off out and looking for the next, the next bit, which is the obelisk. Oh no, the birthplace, that's right. And we know the name of the house. We've got a rough idea where it is. So we'll have to wait and see. So we'll, um, we'll start heading off, but it's so hot today. Hence the hat, sunglasses are in my pocket. Not a cloud in the sky, a little bit of a breeze, but uh, it's very, very hot. So we're gonna press on to the next part. Well, we've just come up Dunford Lane and we've just spotted the top of the obelisk. And let me just show you what I can see from here. And there's the top of the obelisk. Now the obelisk is a stone monument, stands on the lane to Dumford, overlooking Cocking Causeway, which it would have done many years ago. It was put up by Henry Court, a tenant farmer, as a memorial to Cobden. The revenue from the land around it funded court, court's charity for apprenticing poor boys uh, and educating natives of Midas at the grammar school. So let's just have a quick wander in, but it's very strange because it actually looks like this could be in someone's garden. And there it is, wow. That's huge, and it is in someone's garden. So I've got to be careful because I'm walking straight into the sun. And it says on the side there, free trade, peace, goodwill among nations, is what it says. And then on the side, Richard Cobden, 1804 to 1865, and it's just built of stone. And 
I can't tilt the camera up because I'm actually filming straight towards the sun. So, so we're looking at something, what? 25 feet, 30 feet high? Very impressive, but how fancy having that in your garden? So we've now found um, the, the obelisk. We've also found where he's buried, which was at West Lavington Church. But now we've got to find where he was born. And the next stop for Cynthia and I is Dunford House. Dunford House, which is, we think, that way. So let's, uh, let's crack on and try and find it. Hello, this is Kevin. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, follow, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And that would be great. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.